Greetings and welcome everyone. My name is Lokita Maka. In this lesson, we're going to discuss agroecology. Um, this is covered in grade 10, agricultural sciences. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Thank you so much for your support. So when we're talking about ecology, we're talking about the study of the relationships between living things and their physical environment. Now, this environment we refer to as the ecosystem. Therefore, when we're talking about the ecosystem, we're talking about the biological community of interacting organisms and their physical environment. So this means that the ecosystem will consist of living things as well as non-living things. Now, Ecology considered, considers organisms at an individual, population, community, ecosystem, as well as biosphere level. So it, consider, it considers it at five different levels. Now, with the first level, which is the lowest level of organization, which we call the individual level um, or the organism level, now this includes both unicellular and multicellular. So here we're only referring about that individual species, right? Then now when these group of individuals come together, live together within a particular area, then we refer to, uh, to them as population. But this only applies to individuals of a single species, that is, five lions living together, then we will refer to them as population. But now, if there are several populations which interact um, with each other in an environment, then we'll refer to them as community. What, what does this mean? If we've got a group of lions, a group of zebras, a group of um, hyenas in one setting, then we refer to that as community. But now these different communities or these different populations, I mean, they will need to interact with non-living things. They will need to interact now with water, for example. They will need to interact with sunlight. And now where there is this interaction between living things as well as non-living things, then we refer to it as an ecosystem. Then we've got now the highest level of organization. Now, this is the global ecological system, which consists of all the living organisms and other factors now which support life. This will include the atmosphere. This will include um, the oceans and everything now that forms part of the Earth's crust. Then what will happen is, in different parts of the world, we will have different climates, and these climates now will further divide the land into smaller environments, and these environments, we call them biomes. So biomes are areas that have similar types of plants and animals. For instance, we've got forests. Now, these are ecological um, regions which are mainly covered with tall trees that grow closely together. Then we've got a tundra biome, which is an ecological region where low temperatures and short growing seasons prevent from prevent plants from growing. Then we've got a savanna biome, which is made up of grassy ground layer and upper layer of small and widely spread trees. Then we've got a semi-desert area, um, which is a very dry region where most of the plants are small bushes and grasses. Then we've got grasslands, which basically these are mainly covered in grass. Then we've got a desert. Now this ecological region is very dry. It has low rainfall and now what does this mean? It means that there will be only few plants to grow. So these are um, six main biomes around, around the world. They are the six main biomes. Okay. 
Now, the ecosystem is divided into two components, abiotic components as well as biotic components. So when we're talking about abiotic components, we're talking about non-living things. And when we're talking about biotic components, we're talking about living things. So these are organisms that have life. So let's start, let's start with abiotic components. Now, these are non-living things we find in the ecosystem, and they influence which plants will grow in that particular region. And most biotic factors are dependent to abiotic factors. Now, we're going to look at three components. We will look at physiographic components. We will look at climatic components. We will also look at edaphic or soil components, right? Now, coming to the physiographic factors or physiographic components. So these refer to the appearance of the land, be it uh, rivers, hills, valleys, or mountains, right? So now this appearance is determined by three things, by the slope, by the aspect, as well as by the altitude and these three influence plant growth because they affect the climate so looking at the slope now we are talking about the steepness of the land so this is basically the measure of the steepness of the land now the steeper the slope the more runoff what does this mean it means that when there is heavy rain water doesn't enter the soil so it will run down the slope right now a steeper slopes support less plant growth, and meaning that there will be less plants growing in that region. So there are three main types of slopes. We've got flat land, we've got gentle slope, then we've got steep slope. Um, then we've got aspect. So this is basically the direction in which the slope faces. So this has to do now with the sun. And then we've got altitude. This is the height above sea level. So the altitude can cause climate to change over very short distances. Then coming to climatic factors. Now, if we look at sunlight, for example, plants need sunlight to photosynthesize. So this is one of the important um, abiotic components because without sunlight then it means that some of the plants or most of the plants will not photosynthesize and then now most of the animals will therefore be deprived of food right so there is a relationship there then when we look at temperature this is basically how hot or how cold the air is now the temperature will decrease as we move from the equator towards the poles now this will affect the plant and animal life then we've got rainfall which plays a huge role precipitation Play, plays a huge role in both plant and animal life, as well as wind as well. Then we've got edaphic factors or soil factors. So we're going to look at soil type, soil texture, soil depth, soil water, as well as soil fertility. So if we're talking about soil fertility, um, what happens there is fertile soil contains many nutrients and support plant growth. So that's why most people, if they have infertile soil, then they will apply fertilizers, which will fertilize the soil. And then now in return, it will increase the yields, right? Now, when we're talking about poor soil now, this... Um, soil will lack nutrients and then it won't support uh, plant growth. That's when now we will need to fertilize the soil. Then we've got soil texture. Uh, soil is divided into various textures. Um, then soil color, this also has an influence in the type of uh, plants are grown in that uh, region. Then another important aspect is the soil depth. Then we've got soil water, which refers to water holding capacity. 
So these are five different um, adaptive factors that may influence plant growth in that particular region. Then we look at biotic components. Now these are living things in an ecosystem, right? So in an ecosystem, we have three components, three biotic components. So we've got producers. Now, these are green plants that make their own food. During photosynthesis, plants change carbon dioxide. They change water and nutrients into oxygen and carbohydrates. And all this happens in the presence of sunlight. Then we have consumers. Now, organisms that cannot make their own food and eat other organisms are referred to as consumers. So they consume on other organisms. Then these are further divided into three. They are divided into herbivores, which feed on plants, mainly on plants. Then carnivores, which feed on other animals. And then we've got omnivores, which feed on both plants and animals. Then we've got decomposers. Now, decomposers break down dead plant and animal matter through decay. So now what will happen in this process? It means that now, after these dead plants and animals are broken down or, or they after they decay, then the minerals will be returned back to the soil. Right. So that is the relationship thing. Then I also want us to look at the interactions now in an ecosystem. So energy will flow from one living thing to another in an ecosystem. And also, now one of the important things that we need to note is that the sun, which is a non-living thing, is the main source of energy. Now, plants which are living things will change sun's energy into chemical energy in a form of carbohydrates. And now these animals will then eat plants and then absorb the energy. Then this energy now is passed from one living thing to the next. So this can be done either through a food chain, which is represented by the first diagram, or a food web, which is represented by the second diagram, or the ecological pyramid, which is represented by the third diagram. So there will be flow of energy in an ecosystem. Therefore, this means that there is interactions in the ecosystem from non-living things to living things and back to non-living things again. And not forgetting the uh, decomposers, which play a huge role after these um, plants and animals die because they decompose them and then return the plants, return the nutrients back to the soil. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Please feel free to uh, put your comments down below if there's any topic that you want me to include, whether it's grade 10 to grade 12 agricultural sciences or grade 8 to grade 9 natural sciences. Please feel free to let me know. I will gladly do that. Um, otherwise, that's it from me. Thank you so much. Asante sana.